Hello again, this is Jack Sheffield, Jack the Exam Guy. We're going to be talking about basic rules for isometrics today. Uh, the first thing that we're going to talk about is I want you to be mindful of the north, south, east, and west directions on the plan view and the isometric paper. What am I talking about? Well, let me show you. Um, on your isometric paper, I want you to get used to putting north at the top right, south at the bottom left, west at the top left and east at the bottom right. And on your plan view, north at the top, south at the bottom, west on the left, east on the right, just like I've got here. And as we're transferring from here to here, it's going to make a lot of sense to you. Okay, so you see we've got a west to east line because we almost always start with the main line. West to east is west to east. All right. There you go. Not a big deal. All right. Vertical in real life is vertical on your paper. This is a very important concept that will help you be successful here. So we know if we've uh, have done any, any, any plumbing, we can kind of tell, okay, there's going to be a wall here. You're not going to have two people facing each other on lavatories or a urinal facing somebody washing their hands here. So there's going to be a wall. And in order to service these two lavatories with the drain line, you're going to have to go vertical from your horizontal line to get up to the lab. You're going to go vertical in the wall here. You're going to need to go vertical in the wall here. And you're going to need to go vertical here. Don't need to go vertical for a floor drain or your floor water closets. All right, so here we go. We've got our vertical line here, our vertical line here, our vertical line here. And you can draw along with me if you like, but just be aware, look that I have not connected those lines. I have left a little bit of space there, and there's a reason for that. And I'll tell you in a minute. Grading. Everybody wants to know how do they grade and how do they give you, do they give you partial uh, credit and what have you? Yes, you can get partial credit. They don't, ex don't I don't expect you to get 100% on, on every drawing, but, uh, but we're going to get as close as we can, obviously. <clears throat> so, um, here are the things that they look at. One of them is legibility. All right, here's what I want you to do to increase your uh, uh, chances of having a nice, clean, isometric drawing for the grader to look at. The inside of your test packet is to be used as your scratch paper. So you open up your test packet, the inside there, it should be blank. And you can use that to sketch out your isometric before you transfer that onto your isometric paper. Because once you start drawing on that isometric paper, you don't want to be making any mistakes. You don't want to go, oops, I need to erase that and change it a little bit. Because once you start doing that, it becomes a mess. Believe me, I've been there and you don't want that. So in order to get it a, as nice as possible and as, as le legible as possible, I would use that, uh, employ that practice. Okay, so now we're going to look at the angles. The angles are 8% as well. Stay on those grid lines where applicable. Now, as we get into the more complicated drawings, you're going to have to go off of those lines because not everything is direct north, south, east, and west. Um, you're going to have a northeast and a southwest and what have you. So we are going to have to get off those lines at some point, but where applicable, where you can, stay on the green line, stay on the grid lines, and that means your uh, your angles will be appropriate. The next thing we're going to lo look at is orientation. Okay, your spacing on your isometric should match the plan view as far as your orientation is concerned. Well, what do I mean? Well, let's take a look here. As you'll see, I've got um, I've got two labs two sets of labs here that are fairly close together. So I show them fairly close together on the isometric paper. And then I've got a set that's a little bit further away here. And so I space that one out over there. And then I leave plenty of room here for my other fixtures as well. There you go. The other thing that we're going to be talking about is piping. They say piping is 20%. Well, that's pretty self-explanatory. That just means your piping, you have to show all your piping. You know, you have to show all your drain lines. They've got to, they've got to connect and so forth. 
not a big deal. Very self self explanatory. By the way, that orientation is 20%. So make sure that you pay attention to that. Okay, you're going to label according to the legend. Okay, and I'll show you a legend here in just a minute, and we'll talk about uh, we'll talk about uh, the different types of uh, drawings on the legend and your vent lines. Uh, well, this is this is your labeling. This is your labeling right here. Well, we've labeled everything. You know, don't forget. You know, don't forget. Label everything. That could be just a few points that'll put you over the top, and you may, you know, you you're going to be stressed out. So you got to make sure that you uh, you pay attention to all these little details that you uh, that might you might be uh, <clears throat> might just forget because of the just the stress level itself. So. Here's that legend I was talking about. Okay, so note the difference between a, a, a wall water closet and a floor water closet. This one here has got the little pipe in the middle, so the, it goes, you know, the, the, the drain line goes through the floor. This wall does not. Here's your tank. That one obviously goes through the floor. You got where they draw a urinal. Um, you have a lavatory, okay, drinking fountain. You've got a tub, a shower. Now, what I want to point out to you, your, you know, your shower and your service sink look a lot alike, but note that that shower has that rim around it. That might help you out a little bit. You know, a shower has a rim around it, and so your 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 drawing has the rim as well. You got your wall clean out, floor clean out, and so forth, and all, and and what you're looking at there, elevation E L. That's what we're going to use. We are going to do some different elevations and what have you. FFE means finished floor and VTR vent to roof. There we go. You might want to print this out, keep it with you, study it a little bit. Okay, the venting. All right, here we go. We're going to look at our vents. 16% on the vents. It's very important. All right, you're going to you're going to draw all those with dashed lines. All right, so make sure you get all your venting accordingly. And what they're going to generally now this these don't show up, but you're going to see a little circle, a little circle here, a little circle here, a little circle here, and and that's where they're going to show you that the vent connects. All right, those little circles right there. These are, these don't quite show them exactly like you're going to see it on the exam. So. We're going to show direction of flow. This is a big one right here. It's 12%. It's easy to do, but it's also easy to forget. Now, here you go. You've got a vertical line and you have a horizontal line, so you have to show direction of flow. Now, if you read those instructions, it'll tell you that you need to show direction of flow from vertical to horizontal. You don't have to show it any other time. Now, we're going to see some drawings where it is shown, and sometimes it looks very nice, you know, to show that direction of flow everywhere you have a direction of flow. But for grading purposes, you only have to show it from vertical to horizontal. So keep that in mind. Vertical to horizontal is, is, is where you have to show a direction of flow, and this is what you're looking at, something just like that right there. All right, your fixtures, well, that's pretty self-explanatory. You know, you're just going to have to put in your fixtures. Uh, by the way, there are some fixtures that are going to need traps, so you need to make sure that you put in all your traps. Um, and even urinals, by the way. I know a urinal has an internal trap, but they're telling us now that they want to see a trap on a urinal. Now, why is that? I don't know if there's any newfangled traps that they have that are zero flow or something like that, but just go ahead and we're just going to do what they tell us to do and we're going to put a trap in on test day. Once you pass the exam, you can do it however you want. Okay, now take a minute. I always say when you get ready to, to take that exam, stop and read the instructions. All right, I've stopped and read the instructions and go, oh, Direction of flow. All right, you only have to do vertical to horizontal. Well, that's interesting. Well, that makes it a little bit easier, you know, and it'll tell you everything that you need to do. And it's always good to get that last minute, you know, little <clears throat> reinforcement to, to, to show you exactly what they're going to be looking for. They're not trying to trick you. Uh, they will tell you exactly what they're looking for, but it's not easy. I wish you the best on it. These, this has been Jack Sheffield with Jack, the exam guy, talking you through just some isometric basics, how they're going to grade your paper and grade your isometric and so forth, and some basic rules. Um, I, <clears throat> I encourage you to call me at any time. If you have any questions, 904-755-4111. 
and I appreciate your business.